Greetings fellow interloper, it's your buddy Taylor, and I'm back with one awesome video about biodome magic. If you're planning on your next big farm to mass produce high ticket items, there's a good chance your base will soon be overrun with biodomes. Well, I'm here to tell you there is a better way. This my friends is Whiskey Barrel Gaming. What I'm about to show you will work for a, a single plant or a variety of plants, whatever you want. For this example, we'll be looking at making living glass. This is one of the first recipes you'll unlock, so this should come in handy if you're looking to build up your bank account early on. It's also comprised totally out of plants, so it makes for a perfect example. So to clarify, when I say it's made totally out of plants, I'm not including the dioxide and uranium you'll need to do the initial planting of the gamma weed and frost crystal before, you know, your reoccurring harvesting. So you will need a couple non-plant ingredients to get up and running, but from then on it's nothing but harvesting and crafting. For living glass we'll need one lubricant and five glass. To make glass you can either refine silicate powder or frost crystal. Since we are talking about biodomes and farming, we'll make our glass out of frost crystal. So we need 40 frost crystal to make one glass. So 200 frost crystal will give us enough glass to make one living glass, since it needs five. So when you take a look at the recipe for lubricant, we need 400 gamma root to 50 fecium. So it's clear if we want to mass produce living glass, we're gonna need quite a bit of gamma weed. For this example, we'll be producing 10 living glass. Now this number can be much higher if you choose, but your starting numbers will obviously need to be adjusted. I picked 10 just to make it easy to show how this works. So since we're planning to make 10 living glass, the totals that we'll need to plant everything look like this. So the old school way of doing it would be to set up four biodomes full of gamma weed, one for fecium and a couple for frost crystal, so seven domes in total. Now this could be taxing on a power grid, if you didn't have an electrical hotspot nearby. Now let's see what all this magic is about. We'll head up to the top of the Mercury Research Institute to visit our setup. As you can see, we've gone from seven domes to one. <laughs> one dome. How do we do this? What kind of dark magic is at work here, you ask? Allow me to explain. Oh, by the way, I'm assuming you've already liked and subscribed, but I just wanted to drop a friendly reminder. During my first playthrough of the game, I was really, really into farming and crafting. I had these mega farms to grow a ton of stuff. Every now and again, I would be able to place a plant on top of another plant and harvest them both. It was awesome, but I had zero clue how or why this was even happening. Later on, I was watching a video by the legendary Zane of Zane's World and finally got my answer. I'm going to throw that link up now to make sure you guys can watch the same great video I watched from Zane. And I'm assuming you've already subscribed to his channel, but if not, you're missing out on some of the best No Man's Sky content out there. Okay, back to the magic. When you add a door or a corridor to a biodome that already has plants in it, it removes three plant spots but it doesn't delete the three plants that were there in those spots. So the kicker is that not only did the plants remain, their spots become available again once the corridor is removed. So if you're keeping your original entrance intact, in other words, not deleting and re-adding it, you have three other corridors you can add and then remove. Meaning that if you've planted your original 13, you have nine spots to reuse over and over again. Now, of course, there are limits to this based on the complexity of your surrounding base, but you can get a crazy amount of plants in one biodome, if that's your goal. When I'm doing these projects, I find it easiest to have the exact amount of planting materials I'll need, so I can just plant and not worry about keeping track or losing my place. So as long as you know what you'll need and have it all on hand, you can plant in any order you see fit. I'm going to do the gamma weed first. I'll plant in all 13 available spots and then add my three corridors. I'll then delete them, freeing up the three spots in front of each corridor. 
and then I'll continue with this process until I'm out of that plant's resources. So side note, if you wanted to do this with the dome's entrance, you could definitely do that as well. Then you'd have 12 spots each time. For this example, I'm just gonna keep the entrance intact. And of course, you could also put your dome on top of round buildings and enter and exit with a ladder. So you could start with all 16 spots and then add 12 spots each round. If you're planning an especially large project, this would probably save a lot of setup time. I'll keep repeating this process until I have all three of my ingredients planted. Okay, there's one important thing to keep in mind is that all of this should be done in one go. I've tried coming back to the dome after a period of collecting resources, hoping to add on and it just doesn't work for whatever reason it needs to be done all at once. So make sure you have everything you need once you decide to start. Once you're done, all you really need to do is wait the four hours it takes for the fecium and gamma weed to mature. The frost crystal, yeah, it only takes one hour, but I'll just harvest everything together. Alright, the moment of truth. All the plants are ready, so with one click of a button, I'll be able to harvest everything I'll need to make 10 living glass. Worth about 5.6 million units, not too shabby. And this is an extremely simple example. I'm sure your wheels are already turning about what other ingredients you can do this with, and what kinds of farms you'd like to create. Now, I know it's cheesing the game a little, but it's a lot of fun making these magic biodomes, I gotta be honest. And if you've had a little fun here, as always, a like, a comment, and a share is the best way to support this channel. After spending a ton of time planning and editing each piece of content, it feels really good to see that your efforts were appreciated. If you enjoyed this video, perhaps you'll enjoy these as well. Thanks so much for watching and all your support, you guys. This is Taylor with Whiskey Barrel Gaming, signing off.